the UFC upfront controller for the A10C. It's made by Buddy Fox. I'll show you their web page. It comes nicely packaged, well protected. I think the packaging is indicative of the attention to detail overall and the build quality. One unit with a single USB cable. The grey push buttons in a black case, similar to the aircraft and the DCS simulation grey push buttons which have backlighting the potentiometer on the left hand side is to adjust the backlighting behind the grey buttons so you can see them when the light levels low and additionally there's the master caution warning light which functions and acts as a reset and alarm silence so that's both a push button and an independent um, warning light that flashes following the simulation. A little bit of extra software is needed to get that working to get the data coming back up to the controller. Aside from that function, you can just plug this in as a game controller and configure the buttons with absolutely no extra software. You can do all that from within DCS. A little bit extra required to get the master caution warning light working. Nothing nothing too difficult. Uh, quickly the basic dimensions including this potentiometer on the side the overall length is about 266 millimeters the width is about 52 the depth about 21 not including the push buttons and then if you allow for those taller push buttons it's about 25 so about an inch deep not not taking this adjustment into account it's n it is possible to remove this if you if you're very uh, if you're very brave and you don't mind opening it up without the pot it's about two four five millimeters so We've seen from the outside, had a quick look at the functionality. I'm going to show you what I found in terms of getting the controller connected up, functioning in DCS, getting the master caution warning light working, configuring the buttons within the game controls. This is what's required to get the master caution warning light up and running. You can use the UFC just as a game controller, plug and play, and you'll get all the functions of the push buttons. But if you do a little bit more, you can have a working master caution warning light. There's a couple of things to do. Those are explained on the website. And I'll just take you through how I did it. First of all, just sitting on my desktop, I have a folder with the Raygun software. So inside this desktop folder, I've got the files that you download from the website. I believe what's important is to have raygun.exe and settings.xml. Those two files have to be there for the master caution warning light to work and you have to run raygun.exe in the background and leave it running when you open DCS world. That software also allows you to test the master caution warning light without running DCS world so we'll have a look at how to do that. I recommend you do that first get these files in a folder on your desktop, run raygun.exe, and that will let you test the, the master caution warning light before you have to any further complications. So you want to get that working first. The other thing to do, if you look through on your computer where the user's profiles are stored, that's my profile. There should be a folder called save games. 
inside there a folder for DCS, inside there a folder for scripts. If you go to that area and it doesn't exist, just create a folder within DCS called scripts. And you copy over this Lua file, dcs-raygun. It's self-contained, you don't have to do anything with it, just copy it over. You may or may not have an export.lua file in this scripts folder. If you do have one, you need to add a line to the end of it using a notepad editor. If you don't have an export.lua file, then you just create one and you put this line in it. So if you've already got this file, you just add this line to the end of it. If you don't have an export.lua file, you create an empty one and then you paste this one line in. This is all downloaded from the Buddy Fox website with their instructions. I, um, I got that working. The mistake I made at the beginning was I there's quite a lot inside the zip file that you download and it wasn't clear to me exactly what to do. So I actually copied this raygun.exe file over and tried running it. It wouldn't work. And then eventually I realized I should have copied all of this over into a folder and I'd missed off the settings.xml. So copy all of these into a raygun folder, run this to do the testing and leave this running when you start DCS world. Make these changes to your DCS scripts and you should find you can test the UFC master caution warning light without running DCS world. Once that's working, you can leave it running, open DCS world, and you should have a working master caution light. So I'll show you both of those things now. Here's a close up of the UFC. It's plugged into the PC at the moment. The backlight manual adjustment is turned all the way down. So using the hardware adjustment on the left hand side of the UFC, I'll turn the, the backlight control up to full. So you can see the green illumination on the gray push buttons. The master caution light is out at the moment. I'm going to go to the folder where I've copied uh, the raygun files. The important ones here are raygun.exe, raygun.exe. That's the program you can use to control the master caution light manually. The settings.xml file is important. That has to be in the same folder as raygun.exe. So I'll run the exe file. You'll see the raygun program opens. And there's a message here, controller connected. What I can do is unplug the controller and you'll see the disconnected message. So the controller is communicating with the ray gun software. It can, it can see the controllers there. I'll reconnect controller connected message. Now what we should be able to do is control the master caution light using this Raygun program without any input from DCS. So DCS is not running on this PC at the moment. I'm going to click warning light on and you can see the master caution. It's illuminated a sort of very dim orangey color. So the warning light is still on, warning light off, out it goes warning light on back on again warning light off now if i switch the light on and leave it on i'll also now dim the backlighting so the green backlighting on the buttons goes down you'll see the master caution is still visible i don't think that's affected by the backlight adjustment. So it seems the gray push buttons with the green backlighting are controlled 
by the adjustment on the left of the UFC, but the master caution simply switches on and off. Okay, we're in the simulation DCS World A10C. I've zoomed in on the UFC in the game and I've put the hardware UFC in front so we can watch them operate together. I can use the controls on the hardware UFC for instance to change the steer point. You'll see it moving up and down in the heads up display on the right hand side of the simulator. I can also for example enter data into the UFC. You see those numbers going in at the bottom of the heads up display. I can clear them down again. So we've got func full functionality of push buttons on the hardware UFC. The extra thing that's enabled by the ray gun software running in the background is operation of the master caution warning light on the hardware UFC. So just for this demonstration I've mapped one of the fuel boost pump switches to the UFC. They've, you can configure these UFC buttons to do anything you like. If I switch that boost pump off you'll see the master caution flashing in the simulator and you'll see the master caution light flashing on the on the hardware UFC. I can use the push button on the hardware UFC to reset the master caution warning and I can turn the boost pump back on. So once again trigger the master caution in the simulation. We see the master caution warning in the simulation UFC and on the Buddy Fox hardware UFC. If I did it the other way, if I go into the simulation and turn the master caution off then it goes out on the UFC so it just follows what the simulation does. Those push buttons on the hardware UFC may map themselves to the default settings or you can go in and configure them just like any other controller from within the game. I'll do a quick demo of that if you're not sure how to do it. Here we are in the main menu of DCS World. We can change the game controls from this main menu or actually while you're in game the controls can be changed but we'll do it from here. I'll go up to Options, Controls tab. This shows all the controls on the left hand column and then how they're mapped against for instance the keyboard or the UFC that we're using or the mouse. We'll have a look at the UFC controls. We can find them under the UFC category or if you're not sure where to look for things you can just search. So here's the UFC controls again. You'll see some of those are already configured so these buttons have been configured for the UFC to map against simulator UFC controls. If I want for instance to um, to map a button that's not being used at the moment like the UFC Alt key I follow across to the column for the UFC and double click in the empty box. I don't have to type anything into here I can simply go to the UFC itself press the alt button and DCS world will realize that a button's been pushed on the device and then configure the controls accordingly so I say OK and now we've mapped what the simulator calls button 20 on the UFC against the alt key so I'll do another one the data rocker switch is not mapped at the moment so I'll come across from data rocker switch to the UFC column double click in the empty box I'll press data down rocker switch on the UFC it's registered that's button 31 and saved it so you don't actually need to know which of the buttons on the UFC is which number. You don't need to type anything into DCS World. You simply select the control you want and press the button. So it's it's really nice functionality in the game how it does that. I hope you found the video interesting and useful. 
I'll show you a couple of pictures inside and outside the Buddy Fox UFC. Thanks for watching.